Hi there, Joe here from darkartsastro.ca and welcome to beautiful Camden Lake Provincial Wildlife Area just outside of Moscow, Ontario. I'm out here tonight to do some imaging, but the purpose of this video is going to be a rig rundown of my 2018, or sorry, 2019 setup for deep sky astrophotography. So come on over here, we'll get it set up, and I'll give you guys a look. So now you've seen the setup. Uh, via a time-lapse sequence. So now let's go take a look at everything that we've got here. Arguably, the most important part of any astrophotography setup is the mount. In this case, I'm using the Celestron CGX, which I got last fall, not quite a year ago. I have uh, an unboxing video I did of it with my first impressions and all. And while this isn't a review per se, I can say I've been extremely happy with the performance of this mount so far. It's very, very, very steady and I'm quite enjoying using it. So it's all balanced. It's all ready to go now. I'm just waiting to dark so I can align this and it works beautifully. Up on top of it, we've got the Skywatcher. Quattro 250P, which is a 250 millimeter or 10 inch uh, Newtonian reflector. This is a F4 or F3.9 or something like that.Atever. It doesn't really matter F9, F, F3.9, F4, pretty damn close. And it does an amazing job of deep sky photography. I've been I've had this now since the beginning of the summer and it's been incredible. As we go up here, we can see the ZWO ASI 1600 MC Pro color camera. I'm a color kind of guy. I find I have too limited of a time to be out in the field to be shooting narrowband or LRGB shots, I would rather get my color shots. At some point down the road, I would like to get myself a um, mono camera and filter wheel, but for the time being, this is it. And it's connected to my computer via USB 3 cable going out here. And I'm using the one of the ports on it from its two port hub to power my Orion. Uh, mini auto guider and Orion Starshoot auto guider camera. So, as you can see, I've got a dew heater on my guide scope, which is a Kendrick made in Canada, which is awesome, uh, which runs down here to this thousand ops optical uh, four channel dew heater. I don't typically use four channels on it. The most I've ever used was three. Usually when I'm using my refractor, one of my heaters goes to my refractor, one to my guide scope, and I piggybacked my camera on it and used a third heater on that. Now, if we go look over here at the focuser, we will see I've got a Pegasus Astro uh, focuser, uh, stepper motor. Great little unit. I absolutely love this thing. Yeah, it still has dead bugs on it from the last time I was out. I really should have cleaned this when I got home. Oh, and there I guess we have our specs of the telescope. So yeah, so 254 into 1000. So yeah, it is technically F3.9 something. Yeah, so F4 is close enough. So, and the focus controller runs down with all my cabling. It's a little bit, it's not terribly messy. I'm starting to get a little bit more used. I'm going to tuck cables away in a little bit here uh, once I get my movement of the scope all established and everything. 
and everything runs down to my laptop, which is this this old Panasonic Toughbook CF31. This is a first generation i5 CPU. Like these Toughbooks are horribly expensive. They're like about $5,000 to get one. A modern one equipped to this level with eight gigs of RAM, terabyte SSD. Uh, yeah, they're, they're horribly expensive, about $5,000. Luckily, I managed to get it much cheaper on eBay since these are very niche products and you don't need a lot of computing power to do what we do here to run uh, imaging software and auto guiding. So this, I think I got it for something like $500, which is very, very reasonable. Um, these things are tough as nails. You can drive a truck over them. You can spill water. It can rain on it. It's just, they're made for being used outdoors and emergency vehicles, etc. which I believe was the, uh, use of mine previously in an emergency vehicle because it looked brand spanking new when I got it. It still had the little plastic sticker over the Panasonic logo on the lid. It was great. So yeah, this is the control center of my setup. And here I have the manual controller for my focuser. I, I could be doing everything auto, but I like having that manual control. I mount it here when I'm doing imaging so that I can adjust my focus directly from my laptop versus going up to the scope. When I'm actually going to use it visually, I will actually tuck it in right here. It happens to sit just beautifully here so that if I'm at the eyepiece, I can literally just focus like this here. And it is fantastic. So, for power, we have this huge ass box down here. This is a battery box in it. I can't remember exactly what the capacity is, but it's a deep cycle marine battery. It will power my entire setup, including this beast, all night with no issues. It's pretty low by the end of the night, but it's it's got a lot of juice. Although the battery now is on its third year, it's been discharged a lot, so it doesn't quite have the juice it used to. Unfortunately, I realized while setting up my stuff that I forgot my uh, Celestron Power Tank Pro at home. It's a new piece of kit. I've only brought it out once so far, and I totally forgot to pick it up and bring it with me. Typically, I power the mount and the focuser separately off of that. And then I'll put all the other higher drain devices like the tech cooler on the camera, the, uh, the dew heater, and the uh, laptop off of this big battery because it's just, yeah, it's, it is what it is. So folks, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like this video, please, you know, hit the button below, you know what to do. If you hate it, well, I mean, you can do the thumbs down, but hey, what can I do? If you didn't like it, you didn't like it, right? So uh, yeah, keep an eye out, subscribe if you like, and if you like the stuff on my channel, you can take a look through. I've got a lot of stuff that's uh, basically a lot of time-lapse photography. I do a lot of my time-lapse photography actually from this spot here. Most, a lot of my Aurora photography is taken from this area here, so. You know, uh, a lot of my Milky Way shots come from the south side down here. A lot of my star trails come from this north side here. Anybody, uh, there's the barn back there. If anybody's been through my Flickr album, you will see I have a Milky Way with a barn picture. That is it over there. So, yeah, this is a beautiful spot. And I'm planning on enjoying the night here, taking some uh, nice shots. I have a couple of friends that should be showing up shortly to join me. And I'm not 100% sure what my targets will be for the evening, but I'm sure you'll be able to see them on Facebook, on my Flickr, or whatever. So, till next time, keep those eyes and lenses pointed up. Cheers! Hey everyone, Future Joe here. Thanks for sticking through the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, for those of you who have stuck all the way through, I'm going to share the image that I shot that night. 
As you can probably see back here, I shot M8, the Lagoon Nebula. I got about three hours worth of it under really nice conditions overall. I already I also shot a second project that was a test for a panorama I was trying to do, but by the time I f started shooting this second frame and onward, the moon was rising, so it was putting like a real gradient in the sky, so it didn't work out too well. It worked out in the test that I wanted to do, but it doesn't look good enough to, uh, for me to actually want to share that one. However, this one I do want to share, and I've included it at the end of the video, so thanks for watching. Cheers, everyone.